One of the most common questions I've been getting recently is how do you turn a sequence of photos into a video, just like this type of video. And today I'm going to show you three different ways to do it, whether you're a total beginner or someone who wants a full control over the process. And I'll walk you through both free methods, which give you a ton of power, but do require a bit of let's say tech savviness, and then I'll show you easier, more automated options that require paid apps, but make the whole process way faster. Plus, as a bonus, I'll show you how I deliver both photos and videos and how I create a cinematic slideshow from the photos with licensed music using PicTime, which is sponsor of that part of the video. Okay, first method is called FF. MPEG. This is free, super powerful tool, but it does require using the command line. So writing the commands into the terminal in your Mac. So if you're comfortable with that, this is great. But if you're not, you might want to skip to the second or a third method. I'm going to show it how it works on the Mac, but it's also possible to install this on Windows. And I, like, I don't have Windows machine. I don't know how to work with them, but you can find tutorials online or you you can actually use ChatGPT, which is great for this particular method. It can give you step-by-step -step guidance how to install and how to run the command. So step one, open terminal, press command plus space on your Mac and type terminal, hit enter, and it's gonna open the terminal. Before we install FFMPEG, we need Homebrew, which is a package manager for Mac OS. To install Homebrew, you have to run a special command. It's quite long, so we're gonna find it in the description. Once it's installed, you can verify if it's working. So brew space dash dash version, if it prints a version number, you're good to go. Now the homebrew is installed, we can go install FFMPEG. So we run this command in terminal brew space install space FFMPEG. Let it install. And when it's done, we have to navigate to our image folder. So open our folder with the images and we need to drag it drop into the terminal after typing CD space and now we drop the folder so it should auto fill the path of that folder and we hit the enter. And now we're in the right place. So terminal is kind of inside that folder with our images. Okay, now our images should be named in a sequence. So the best way to do it is when you're exporting them from Lightroom, just make sure you're using the numbering sequence with at least three digits. So we go 001, 002, 003, because if we're doing longer sequences, like 100 something images, you have to have it with three digits. So now we have to run a special command to create a video. So this is this is the command here on the screen. And you can again, copy and paste that into the terminal. And like, just for you to understand what it does, there's like few things that you, you might want to change. First one is frame rate. So inside there's a line dash frame rate space 30. So that sets the video to 30 FPS. You can change it to 60 or whatever you want. Then there's dash I animation. So that tells the command to look for three digit number files. You, if you have the different name of the file, you have to put it here in that part of the command. And the rest of the part is actually the codec that we're going to be using and the quality and how it optimizes and compresses the file. So this is what I found worked best. But if you want to change it up a bit, you can also use ChatGPT to give you commands for this. ChatGPT is actually amazing. Just tell it to give you commands for FFMPEG conversion from photos to videos. And it should give you like a bunch of different commands. And at the end, you just type the name of the file. So I called it output.mp4. So you can change that as well. You, you hit enter. And once the process is done, the, the video is created and it's done. You, you'll see your output.mp4 in the folder. You can play it and it just run and I find this actually really good and if you're comfortable with that that's completely free tool and you can you know you can do whatever you want in terms of the compression of the formats and so on the method number two is Photoshop so that's kind of built in for many photographers because like if like if you have Lightroom you probably have Photoshop as well so when you open Photoshop you go to the file open you select the first frame from the, the, the sequence photos and then you check image sequence like down below you hit enter 
it asks you for a frame rate so i recommend 30 frames per second but you can play around with that depending on what effect you want to achieve with your video sequence and then it should open the timeline panel at the bottom of the screen if it's not showing you can go to your menu window and then find timeline and press on it and you will see the timeline panel down below and you can press play to preview on my machine for some reason it it just looks bad it's just slow but that's just the preview as soon as i will export that video it will look fine in order to export it you go file export render video or that menu icon on the right it also has render video and you have to just choose a format i do recommend choosing h.264 and also i recommend putting the manual resolution so in my case i'm going to go for full hd this is vertical image so full hd is going to be 1080 by 1920 you press enter and wait a bit and it should be good to go now the method number three is actually the easiest and is the one that i personally use but it does require a paid app called glue motion for me i actually get it through the subscription called setup so that's a subscription model that includes a ton of pro apps for mac os it costs nine dollars 99 cents and you have like tons of apps like clean my mac bartender i also use app called permute or app to record my screen there's like tons tons of apps that if i would pay separate subscriptions for it wouldn't make much sense so setup for me totally worth it and the app glue motion is just as easy as dropping your folder then you will see your images listed the next step is you can transform the image so you can crop you can you can choose a different version of the crop you can go square you can go instagram 4x5 so whatever you want there's also an option to kind of edit the image but our images are already edited so we're going to skip that we can go straight to the frame rate option so for frame rate i'm going to use 30 but when you click preview it's going to render the preview for you and you can change the frame rate on the go to decide how fast or how slow you want your video to be and then you just export you can export a bunch of different formats so it's like as easy as it can be in terms of creating video from the photos now once i've created these video clips the next step is delivering them along with the photos and for that i use picktime which is my go-to gallery provider PicTime isn't just for delivering photos. It also lets me deliver videos and short clips, making the gallery feel more alive and immersive for my clients. Instead of just static images, they get a full experience with motion, which makes a huge difference. But what's really cool is that PicTime is keep innovating, constantly adding new tools that make slideshows and video integration even better. And just this month, they've introduced new music features that take their built-in slideshow creator to the next level. If you have used their slideshow tool before, you know how powerful it is. It lets you build a fully customized slideshow with licensed music, beat matching and different layout. And the licensed music part, that's actually huge because if you're sharing slideshow on social media or even delivering them to the clients, you don't want to deal with copyright claims or muted videos. So with PicTime, everything is cleared. You can just focus on creating an amazing experience. And now with the latest update, they've expanded their music library, improved the tools to sync images perfectly to the music. For me, Big time like has become must have tool in my workflow. I've used it for years. It makes delivering wedding stories so much more impactful. And if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend it. It's kind of all in one platform for delivering photos, selling prints, and of course, creating stunning experience for your clients. Check out the link in the description to try it out. And I thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.